Hartford C. Wilson Family Office Club. This is our final episode of our due diligence mini series. Over time, we may record a couple of uh, bonus episodes for this. If we have a really great interview with a, a billionaire or a family office or investor, we might add a bonus episode or two. Um, but the core of the content is going to end with this episode. Um, this is one of the most powerful concepts I can provide to you related to due diligence because it's so strategic in nature. Uh, this can dramatically change your results as an investor. And many people don't get too excited about due diligence, right? Um, people are not really jumping up and down to look at it. It's more exciting to get involved with a high growth company or talk about an idea in your industry that's going to change the whole, the whole niche that you compete in. Um, but this is, this is the concept really. And it is that I started out the series talking about the three buckets that you can invest in your defensive bucket of public markets, real estate that helps you play offense and defense with hard assets that typically are cash flowing. Um, I'm not a high leverage real estate person, so it's a relatively low risk allocation for myself. Uh, we have low amounts of debt on our properties. Um, and then your third bucket, which is where you're really focused on playing offense and growing your net worth the fastest. So go back and watch the first and second episode of this mini series if you missed it, and then come back here and this will make a lot more sense. Um, but the point of explaining it in that way is that you should be focused on certain real estate food groups in certain states and become relatively uh, well-versed in that over time, over a number of years, even if you're investing in three to five areas within real estate, perhaps. In the area where you're playing the most offense, you should be an absolute expert in world-class or plan to be over time. And the reason is that the smartest investors I know, they get to see deals first, they get to see deals exclusively, and because of their strategic value, they get deals at a better valuation than any other investor in their own niche or other niches. If you try to invest in mobile app companies, there's dry cleaners, auto repair shops, and crypto funds, Nobody's going to give you the best terms because you have massive strategic value, unless you're really well known Billy Street Titan that's just known globally, like a Mark, Mark Cuban type, then okay, or Warren Buffett, okay, well then you get a, a cheat card and people will give you amazing terms the rest of your life. But for the rest of us, you know, normal human beings here on planet Earth that aren't super famous, the reality is you need strategic value that you can show, that you have case studies of, that you have references of, examples of, and a track record of performing and deep expertise. Ideally, you are who they want to be when they grow up. If you grew your three dry cleaning locations and sold it for $10 million, and you're talking to someone who's got one location, you are who they want to be. If you're talking to somebody and they need capital and you have access to a lot of capital and investors, then they want your help, right? And so hopefully you've been down the path they want to go down. And so that is one way that you get to source deals at better valuations and get to see deals first. And if the deal is amazing, you lock up that deal with your capital, somebody else's, and then that joins in with you in the deal. And then no one else ever get, even gets to know that that deal exists. And you might say, oh, well, that's not fair. It's like, well, one response to that is life is not fair. And the other response is that Jeffrey Gittimer always taught me that no, life is not fair, but that's a good thing. People want to do business with those they trust, who are good human beings, who are enthusiastic, who are passionate, who are focused, who add the most value. Um, it would not be responsible steward of your own capital and time as an entrepreneur or investor if you fairly let everyone invest and have an equal share. It's like, no, you want to put the you want to get capital from the person who's going to move the needle. It's going to help you with the sale. It's going to help you scale the company, right? Otherwise your company ceases to exist and you cease to employ people. And then people lose their jobs because you did a bad job as the head of your family office or the head of your company. That's also not fair. And as a CEO or steward of your wealth, it's your job to put it to use in the most effective way possible. And if you want to use the capital you produce for Make-A-Wish Foundation wishes, then or whatever it is, great. If you want to use it to employ a thousand people, and that's your way of giving back, is just doing good while doing well, and that's great as well. So we do have that question come up sometimes that you know some of the strategies we provide give you an edge to get deals first and exclusively and at better valuations. Um, for example, securing strategic choke points. And then people say, oh, well, by you getting that deal, now other people don't get it. I'm like, yeah, that, that is the harsh truth. That is planet Earth. That is, you know, gravity on planet Earth. Um, that's just how the world works. But you can do so in a way where you're adding value to people all along the way and going out of your way to help good human beings, which we really stress a lot in our investor club. So I'm going to give many examples of this and how this can play out. 
we invest a lot into medical and dental practices. We recently invested into a med spa and we capitalized it and I joined their team. And what I found was that as we were looking for investors to join, there was somebody who'd ran their med spa for 19 years and they sold it a couple months ago. Um, they ended up wanting to invest. Once they invested, that raised interest level from all other investors because they vetted the deal and they liked it enough to invest. We then had somebody who took half the deal who runs four med spas and is doing millions of years in prop millions of dollars a year in profits in their med spas. And it's because they were doing so well in those med spas and they know the space so well that they agreed to get on a weekly coaching call with the head of the med spa we're investing in and not only take half the deal, but also do a coaching call every week with that CEO. So we gave better terms to that investor. Um, was that fair? Yes, it was fair because he spent his life becoming an expert in that niche. He was adding extra value on a week co weekly coaching calls. And if he stops adding that value, then he loses that extra deal term. Um, and so the point of that is the deal got done faster. Everybody sleeps better in the deal because there's true industry experts who came in as the anchor investor. One of my mentors, uh, his name is Sajin, you know, I met him 20 years ago and he always taught me that if you're going to raise $300 million or $30 million or $3 million that you start with an anchor investor. You start with somebody who has such big credibility that others will follow them into the deal. I'm on a mission to interview 100 billionaires for billionaires.com, but I'm also reading all 240 books ever written by a billionaire. Um, I'm over 70 books into that process. And one of my favorites is by Steve Schwarzman, the founder of Blackstone. Haven't been able to interview him yet, in case anyone out there has a connection to him or, or any other billionaire I could interview, that'd be amazing. Um, but in his book, he talked about how for nine months he shopped his billion dollar fund around and nobody would give him a dollar. And then he went to Japan and some Japanese oligarchs uh, essentially invested, the others invested, and then he went back to the US with that money in hand, a couple hundred million invested, and he filled up the rest of the billion dollar fund. And he had no momentum until he got there and he raised a billion dollars doing that. Um, so that's just a story about finding an anchor investor, a blue chip, highly credible investor. Um, a couple other examples of getting deals first exclusively and at better valuations. Um, we once had a deal where we were trying to buy an asset and it was a community in the medical dental space and they wanted $3 million for the deal. We were able to buy that for under $500,000 because we did the due diligence to understand why they valued it so highly, had them keep that piece. We carved out the rest of the deal for what we wanted and it was a win-win and we got the deal done for a six of the price we would have had to pay otherwise. There's a company in Canada. We bought 5% of the company. We only paid for 2.5% of it. They gave us 2.5% equity as advisory board shares. They wanted some of our skin in the game for us to actually put money in it, but they also gave us the advisory board shares and it cut the valuation effectively in half. Uh, we also, with another company, were given 33% of their company because they knew we'd be a helpful partner. With another company, we were given 20% of their company because they knew we'd be a helpful partner. That doesn't happen often, and it doesn't happen until we put a decade and a half of work into building our expertise, running an investor club, focusing on a niche, etc. So I hope that this provides many examples on how doing better due diligence, more focused due diligence, asking a lot of questions up front via email, um, evaluating the people you're doing business with, um, very quickly, saying no to more things, having a due diligence questionnaire, having a tool set of 100 due diligence areas you could look into, um, and thinking about how you can bring in an anchor blue chip investor. If you're an investor and you love a deal, but you're not quite sure yet because it's not one of your laser focused niche areas where you're playing a strong offense, then who is the laser focused niche expert? Can you pay them for their time? And when you do, did they ask if they can be part of the deal because they love the deal too and now they want to be part of it? That's a great sign. Or who could you find that has all the industry expertise you wish you had for this deal and see if you can have them invest alongside of you so you're vetting it together and you're going deep on the due diligence together. In my experience, by positioning yourself well after you know what your focus is and where you're playing offense, communicating where you play offense, where you add that strategic value, wearing that on your sleeve, Instead of saying we invest into everything, because it's not true with any investor, um, knowing your three buckets and doing more thorough due diligence, it protects your money, it protects your time, and it allows you to invest in deals first exclusively and at better valuations. 
that can literally change your life as an investor. It can cut a decade off of your life on saving up enough money to retire one day, or it could make the difference of you living in a, a dream location versus a, a less nice location when you retire one day. So I hope this is helpful to you, whether you are an angel investor, private investor, run an investment club, a wealth management platform, um, if you work in do, a due diligence role somewhere, or if you're just getting started, maybe working for an ultra wealthy family or family office, um, I hope you enjoyed this mini series. We have a lot of live events you can come and meet me personally at. You can watch 75 to 125 investors speak on stage over just two or three days. It's a fire hose of information. You'll learn a ton by being there. Um, if you want access to our due diligence resources, you have questions on anything I covered here, you want to get involved with billionaires.com or our family office club, please go to familyoffices.com and reach out to me directly and say hi. Um, you can reach out via text message or WhatsApp at 305-333-1155, or you can email me, richard at investorclub.com, and we can get you access to the due diligence tools, but also our private investor playbook, which has 11 powerful tools for being a more effective private investor. Hope you enjoyed this mini series. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next one. Make sure and check out our other mini series here on YouTube and our podcast.